uh, regression discontinuity design. So we will briefly discuss this con the concept, and then next week we'll oh I will upload the video. So next week will become online class, and yeah. And uh, yeah, so we almost finished all the causal inference tools. So that's, I think it's okay. We can just direct go online. And then you will have the uh, office hour. So basically, uh, from the next week, the class time is kind of like office hour. So you can book office hour. And I will let you know how to do that. And we can have more meeting discuss your term paper and your research question. I think it's also helpful for your, uh, your final term paper. Okay, so any questions? Okay, so let's start. So last time we have briefly introduced the synthetic control method, the, the concept. The, the, the things we want to do is we try to estimate the causal effect for some treatment for the treated unit one. So only treat unit one receive the treatment. And we want to know how does this treatment or policy affect treated unit one. So we want to estimate the treatment effect for the treat unit one for each period after treatment happened. But the problem is we can only observe the treat unit one receive the treatment. So only Y1 the potential outcome if this unit receive the treatment, this potential outcome is realized. But the Y0 is counterfactual, it's not realized. Because for the treaty unit one, we never observe the potential outcome if this unit does not receive any treatment. So the synthetic control method suggests us we can recover this y0 using observed outcome. So we just use the weight average of other non-treated units. So other non-treated units could be unit 2 to unit j plus 1. We just use, choose the uh, sum weight that can give us the good match before the treatment happened. And if we can find such weight, we can use this weight average to construct so-called a synthetic control unit that can help us to represent the, uh, the potential outcome if the treated unit one did not receive the treatment, this counterfactual outcome. Okay, so the, the problem we, for a synthetic control is we need to find the, a weight that can assign to the, every non-treated unit. And how can we choose the weight is we try to minimize the treated unit one, the treatment group, and the control group, and other non-treated units. Their weight average, we want to this difference, that this, this is a distance function. So there are some algorithms, some, some function you can define. So there are many functions you can use, for example, uh, the, the, the difference you take a square or use absolute value. There are several, but you can define for their distance. But the, the, the goal is try to minimize their distance, their difference. And the X can be include some observed characteristics before the treatment happen, and also pre-treatment outcome. So that is uh, every time period before the treatment, you want to match this outcome. Try to make these outcomes pass are the same as the treated unit one's outcomes pass before treatment happen. So you want to find a way, try to create, uh, try to minimize the difference between the treated unit one and other non-treated units, their, uh, their difference. So basically, you try to find some way that can produce the synthetic control units that are very similar to the treated unit to make, match all the pretreatment periods, the, the outcome, and also other characteristics. And if you can find this weight, any difference after the treatment happened can represent the causal effect. 
or if they are overlap, that means there's no effect. You can conclude some causal effect. Okay, so that's the last weeks uh, we have discussed until then. So the next question is, we actually, we know we can get some point estimate, some causal effect estimate, but we don't know whether this big difference, whether this just a chance finding or represent a causal effect. It's possible uh, even there's no effect happened in 1989. We run the synthetic control, we still find this gap. But this not just represent the causal effect, it may be just the, by chance we, we, we find this result. So, so the next question is we need to do some hypothesis testing to, to know whether our estimate is significantly different from no effect, significantly different from zero or not. But the formal statistical inference, the formal hypothesis testing for the synthetic control method, until now, no one haven't really known. The problem is we don't know the, this point estimate, the synthetic control estimate, is distribution. No one knows it's asymptotic distribution. The statistician or econometrician haven't derived the formula for this point estimate. So we don't know the this point estimate is standard error. So we cannot use the typical hypothesis testing technique to know whether this estimate is significantly different from zero or not. Okay. So the thing we can do is we use the data to construct the distribution, to construct the p-value, to help us to make the decision, to know whether this estimate is different from zero or not. So that's so-called the permutation method. Okay, so the main idea of the permutation method is we want to ask how often we can get the big effect uh, for the California if we just randomly choose a state from the non-traded unit and run the similar synthetic control. So, we, so in this permutation method, we will use all the non-traded unit. Each non-traded unit, we run the same synthetic control estimation. And if we find many of these, we so-called the placebo estimate, are bigger than the real estimate for California. If we find a lot of such estimates are bigger than California's estimate, then we might interpret our causal effect for California does not really represent the evidence for causal effect because we use non treaty units and run the same synthetic control estimation. We also get very big impact. And that means maybe the Causal effect we estimate for the California may be just the chance finding, just by chance, not really represent any causal effect. So, so in our practice, we, we do like this. We first will estimate the effect for California. We get, for each period, we get some estimate for each year. And then we also do the same things by apply the same synthetic control method for other non-treated state, non-treated unit. For example, we use Alabama as the treated treatment unit and other states in US as the uh, non-treated unit and run the same synthetic control. And we can also get some estimate, for example, the difference between the real Alabama and synthetic Alabama. And we want to compare with California. So we do this for each state. For each state, we all do the same thing. And we want to compare, we want to know how many of them are bigger than the California. If there are a lot of possible estimates are bigger than the California's estimate, then maybe this difference, this causal effect, does not really represent the significant impact of the treatment because they are all smaller than the other placebo estimate. 
Okay. So in this method, basically the first step is we do a lot of placebo treatment effect for each unit in control group using the synthetic control estimation. We estimate a lot of placebo effect using other non-treated states and save it and count. So this is other non-treated state and its synthetic control estimate. And we want to compare with the treated unit one, the California's estimate. And we want to calculate how many of them are bigger than California. So this is the indicator back a variable. This means if this is bigger than the treated unit one, this is one. And we want to calculate how many, the share of the placebo estimate are bigger than the California's estimate. The share, so divide by the total number of the units. So the share, so this is the share of the placebo estimate that are bigger than the California's estimate. So if this share are large, that means the p-value is very big. This is the p-value. That means just use non-treated units can all the non many non-treated units, its synthetic control estimate actually are larger than the synthetic control estimate for California. So that means our California's estimate, this estimate, maybe is not really represent the treatment effect. It's just randomly happen. It's just by chance. So we will conclude the estimate for the California's one is not significantly different from zero. But instead, if a lot of uh, all the non-treated units, the placebo estimate are smaller than the California's estimate, that means these p-value are very small because none of them are bigger than California. So that means maybe the California is kind of like outlier and why, why it's become an outlier is maybe it's due to the treatment pattern in 1989. So that will, we will conclude uh, the, these California effects are significant different from zero. So we will use this to construct kind of like p-value concept. So, the, so why, how we define whether it's significant or not is also according to the traditional theoretical, like 5% or 10% or 1%. So if the p-value is smaller than the 10%, that means uh, only 10% of the placebo estimates are larger than the California's causal effect, uh, California's synthetic control estimate. We can also conclude uh, this is the, the California's estimate is a significant difference from zero. Okay. So that's uh, this is the concept for the hypothesis testing when you do the synthetic control method. All the Yeah, that's good question. But your the, the number of placebo estimate you can run is restricted by is constrained by you the number of the non-treated units you have. For example, in this, the US only have 51 states. So the maximum they can use is 50 states. So but I would say as many as possible. Yeah. But you have some constraint, some nature constraint. What if uh, the person that's making the material treatment only use the percent of all of the instead of the would that affect the outcome of the analysis? But why just use these countries? You mean the Europe, right? Yes. Uh, you mean only use among only use thirteen or something? Yes. Yeah, so you need to explain why you just want to use this 13 instead of all. Maybe you can argue other states, other countries, maybe the, the match is not good. So you kind of like eliminate this because they can't, uh, later we will discuss this. If the, the, the matching quality before treatment is not good, we will eliminate such possible estimates because the, the estimate after the treatment happened cannot really represent real placebo effect. Okay. 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 
算啊，这个我们的头还是。每一个都可以算出来。呃，这个会分两个，我们通常会用事件发生前的当做它的 matching quality。那我刚刚那个同学等于是说，我们用 match quality 比较好的，才进入我们的 placebo estimate。比较不好，我们就不会。那事件发生后，呃。对于 placebo estimate， 它就是用来对跟 treatment 做比较，来得出那个 p value， 它功能就只是这样。那真正有功能的还是 treatment 的这个差别。对。So any other questions? Okay. So, so the You will get finally. You will get like this graph. So this graph is compared with real outcome and the synthetic outcome for the treated unit and for non-treated unit. They all plot this difference in the this graph. So you can see the solid lines for California. The this line is. Before treatment happens, very close to zero. That's very uh, makes sense. It makes sense because the treated unit and synthetic California they are very similar before treatment has happened. So their difference is very close to zero. And after treatment happens, it becomes negative. The difference becomes negative. So it will like this. And other gray line. Is the placebo estimate that is other non-treated units? Its real outcome and its synthetic outcome, their difference. And the p-value, how we calculate is we try to compare with our uh, uh, synthetic estimate for the California with other states, other placebo estimate. And for this example, we find actually the California is very negative compared to others. But you can see there's still some placebo estimates are bigger, are more negative than the California ones. But this estimate maybe is not really reliable because their pretreatment matching quality are not good. For example, this line, they actually is become this. But before treatment happened, we actually does not use synthetic control method to create a good synthetic units for this placebo estimate, for this non-treated unit. So usually, we will eliminate such estimate based on the some criteria. So usually we will adjust our placebo estimate for the quality of pretreatment match. And usually we will use this criteria, that is the good mean square predict error, RMSPE, to, to evaluate how good of the pretreatment matching. So what is RMSPE is the each non-treated unit or treated unit, its real outcome compared with its synthetic control outcomes, their difference, and take a square and sum over the all the pretreatment period. So from period one to T0. T0 is the, the, the period right before treatment happened. So we will calculate this RMSPE. And usually we will eliminate the perceivable effects with very big RMSPE. Okay. Oh, I have updated the slide. So maybe that's not in the previous slides, but you can download from the current slides. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you say again? Because, for example, uh, 
For for each, uh, yeah, you can say it again. Yes, uh, each way the synthetic uh, estimate is different for each case, right? Yes. And and how do we calculate that? Because uh, the way that a state will be different for each case. For each, yeah. For the treaty unit one, you will use some weight average over non treaty state. Mm -hmm. And for other perceivable estimate, you also have another synthetic unit, for example, for New York, for Alabama. And let's also use other non treaty unit as the weight average. And these weights are all different. And you say, why, if we use all different weights, what is good or not? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, there's, I think they only care about whether you can have good pretreatment matching or not. If you can find some way, no matter the way, it's not necessarily the way need to be the same for all the treaty units and all for the other possible estimate. We just care whether we can find some way that can predict, can match the pretreatment uh, period's outcome for each state for each state yeah. uh, but the data or r will help you to do that <laughs> so the algorithm i just give you the intuition and the concept of the algorithm but you can use the statistical software to implement all of this so i will discuss how to use data to implement that and I will also record a video for R. When we discuss R, I will also let you know how to implement all the causal inference method you learn in this class using the R. Okay? And you will have homework for that, for R. Okay. So we need to eliminate such thing and based on the RMSPE. So usually we will eliminate, set some threshold to eliminate the bad matching the possible estimate with bad matching, pretreatment matching, using the RMSPE. So that means if uh, the difference between the, the real outcome and the synthetic outcome are too big, we will just don't use that for the possible estimate. So if we would do that, we may get like this. We only use 29 possible estimate when we calculate the p-value. Okay. So we will eliminate some noise one. And then you will find these p-values very close to a zero, almost zero, because none of possible estimates are neg more negative than the California synthetic control estimate. So you will conclude these estimates very significantly from zero, because it's below to the 5% or even 1%, because it's zero, p-value is zero. So any questions? And also, when you use data, they also will report so-called uh, standardized p-value. That's sometimes something we usually use when we calculate a p-value. So this standardized p-value will take into take the pretreatment matching quality into account when we calculate p-value. So we does not directly compare the placebo estimate with our treated treatment effect with the California estimate. We usually will divide the each placebo estimate, each non-treated unit, its RMSP during the pretreatment period. To basically, even you find very large effect, but if you RMSP is very large. This effect could be small because you have very big uh, denominator. And that's basically try to take into account the matching quality. So even you find very large effect like this, this effect, this placebo effect. But actually it's pre treatment estimate, the matching quality is very bad. The predict error is very big. So you will divide this as uh, uh, estimate, possible estimate with this pre IMSP, the IMSP estimate. And this will give you smaller impact for this. Okay. So usually we will use that to as a criteria when we calculate p value by divide the 
each unit is pretreatment matching quality measured by the RMSPE, the predict error. Okay. So any questions? We don't need the one Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good question. We if we use this standardized P value, maybe you don't need to eliminate, do like eliminate by yourself for the big RMSP placebo estimate. You don't need to do that. Because you can use all of them, all of the placebo estimate, and take into account the pretreatment RMSP when you calculate the p-value. So you can directly use all the placebo estimate. So these two strategies, either you use this, uh, use all of the placebo estimate, but take into account RMSP, or you set up some threshold and eliminate uh, some uh, placebo estimate with very big RMSP when we calculate the uh, usual p-value. Both are okay in the literature. Okay, so any questions for this? Okay. Okay, so then I will let you know how to use the data to implement all the things we just discussed so far. So you can download the data, uh, download the do file. From the link. So do file is called SCM. Yeah. And this one actually I incorporate in this new one. So you don't need to download this. That's fine. SCM do file. And it will use the data from the here. Uh Smoking CA. So I will I discuss I have mentioned that here. SCN and use smoking CA DTA. And you need to install the package ADO file. Okay. So after you do that, you can open the do I can open the do file. Okay, so you can open this and then we can you can open the data set. So the data set looks like this. Is the uh, the same sample we just mentioned to add, evaluate the effect of anti-tobacco policy on California cigarette consumption. So this is the state level data. So you have each state, and you also know the state ID because this is the numerical value, but with the label. So it's a blue one. So for example, Alabama its state ID is one, and so our key is the uh, California. California is three. Okay, and you will use need this information when you implement the synthetic control method when using the data. And this is a year variable. How many? Uh, this is a panel data. Follow the same states over time. And others, this is the outcome variable. This is cigarette consumption. And others, just the pretreatment outcomes, uh, pretreatment characteristics, like the uh, income in that state, beer consumption, and share of young people, and retail price for the cigarette. Okay, so that's the data. So the first things you will do is you need to declare, uh, you need to claim this data set is the panel data. So what is the, you know, the panel variable and what is the time variable? So you need to use TS set that tells data this, which variable is panel variable, which variable is time variable. So that's a very standard you need to do 
when you use this panel, uh, panel data. And that's also required for the package you need to claim to let Stata know you want to follow which variable over time. So in this case, we follow each state over time. So the state, this variable is our panel variable. And the time variable is the year. Okay. So first, you need to dis declare uh, this. Otherwise, you cannot implement the following package. Oh, uh, XT sets. Oh, XT set. 应该是一样的。应该是 X。你这边写 XT set， 可能也可以做做一样的事情就可以了。有可能，但是也有用 TS set。对，差应该都差不多。但它基本上就是要在用这个套件之前宣告一下，谁是 panel variable， 谁是 time variable。就是这样讲。That's the first step. Set up the panel data, and then you can do synthetic control estimation. So using the sync, this is the package. So we will use two package. One package called sync, another package called sync runner. So sync will only for the single three D unit case, but later we will expand to the multiple three D unit case. Uh, but this package can only use for the single treatment unit case. That means the treatment group only one unit, one type or one specific unit. And it can help you to compute the weights and other covariance balance to compare with the all the characteristics to see whether the treatment unit and non-treated unit are similar or not. But in a thin runner, what's the the a uh, goal for the scene runner is it can help you to do hypothesis testing. So that is, you need to use scene runner to gen to to calculate a p value. This scene runner basically will run a lot of time for scene. This package, Try, so it's based on this package. Run a lot of scene as the uh, synthetic function estimation for each non-treated units can help you to calculate the p value. So this is for hypothesis testing, and potentially it can also extend to the multi multiple treated unit case. Okay. So these two are kind of help each other. Okay. Okay. So the step two is synthetic control estimation. So you use sin, and first thing you need to put is the outcome. And second is your covariance, the predictor. So that is、uh, either the pretreatment period outcome or some observed characteristics. Okay. So and then you also need to specify this. This is basically the treatment unit, treated unit. So in our case, is California's state ID. So that's three. In this case, and treat period. This you need to put the time period when treatment occur. So in this case, it's 1989 or 1988, something like this. Okay. So that's why you need to use T set, T S set to claim this is the panel data. Then Stata will know I use the the information in state this var variable state to look at this and the variable year to look at the information for the time period. Okay. So that is the example you can find in the do file. So you basically your outcome is the secret consumption and other. A predictor or characteristic you can control. You want to match, for example, you want to match beer consumption, and maybe you want to specify just I want to match 1984 to 1988 average beer consumption. So you can use this to do that.、Uh, 1984. So this is the increment. So one means 1984, 1985, 1986. Until 
So you can put two, that is 1984, 1986, 1988. And they just take average over this time period. Okay. And if you do not say any time period, for example, like this, income and retail price, or share of the young people, if you like this, they will just take the average over entire procurement period. So that is 1970 to 1988. Okay. And or you can just specify specific year you want to match. For example, here they match the procurement outcome for 1988, 1980, 1975. But usually we will match all the year, all procurement outcome in each year before treatment happen. But here, he just as an example, we just match three years. But usually, when you do a synthetic control, you want to match all the year before the treatment happen. So you will put 1970, 1971, 1972 every year for the, for the outcome. Okay. And then you will generate the result. So here I just run the scene runner. Oh, sorry, I haven't declared. So you can implement. So if you implement, they will show the result. So you will show like this, the treaty units, California, and the non-treaty units, other states, and all kinds of secrets, and the periods. And you will also give you some useful re uh, result, like RMSPE, before treatment occur. So this is the pre-treatment RNSPE. So it can show the uh, matching quality. Okay. So it's just one. That means the difference is quite small. And this is the weight for the synthetic California. So the synthetic California is consists by 24% uh, Nevada and 28% uh, connected, something like this. And some uh, Utah's received 36%. And other states just zero. And it could be because their pre-treatment outcome are not, not very similar as California. So they don't receive any weight. Okay. So this is the result. And also you will generate a table looks like this. And this is, you can find here in the, the end of the report. It will show uh, the treaty units, the beer consumption over this time period is 24, and the synthetic California is 23. So actually they are very similar, because you choose the way, try to match these characteristics. So that's why you can match quite well. And other variable you can see actually are very similar, are very similar. And it's also useful, you can display what if you do not use synthetic control. If you just use simple average over all the non-treated states, their, their result, their matching are not good. For example, here, the secret consumption in 1988, in California actually is 90. And if we just do simple average, it's 140. But if you use synthetic control method, you will generate synthetic California. It's very close to the real California in 1988. Okay, so that's something you can also show for your reader when you do this synthetic control method. Okay. And then uh, you might want to generate some graph. You just put the figure in the end of the command. It will generate the figure looks like this. But you can do this by yourself. Later we will discuss. And also other settings. For example, you use different algorithm that potentially can give you better matching, but take more time. And also you can choose some specific non-treated units. For example, so using the control unit, this option. For example, you just want to use the state ID 4 to state thir uh, ID 30. Other state you don't want to use. 
So you, you can use this option to specify the non-trading units you want to use when you choose the weight. Okay, so that's one thing you can do. Okay, and finally, for this scene comment, you can save the result you, gener you generate. So you can use this keep option. It will save the result to this file post sc result. So you can name whatever get whatever name you want, and that will save your the estimate of your synthetic control unit, and also the weight for non-trading units. So when you do that, you will generate, you will get a new file that I have already generated. Oh no, not this. You very cool. Sorry. I need to So yeah, uh it takes some time, but you can save some result, the result to this file, and it will tell you the weight for each non 3D unit and your estimate since I control uh of uh estimate. Okay, and final step is do hypothesis testing. You can use the thin runner to do that. So the thin runner, uh, you also again you put the outcome and also the predictor, the the pretreatment characteristics, and it will uh, when you do that, it will generate a result, and you can also specify. Uh, you want to exclude some placebo effect that has too big RMSP in the pretreatment period by using this option. So you will put some number here. So one means uh, you want to exclude the placebo effects with the same RMSP as the treated unit. Just one times treat, uh, RMSP as the treated unit. If you put two, that means you want to exclude the placebo effects that have two times RMSP than the treated units. For example, the treated units RMSP is one, and you want to exclude the uh, the placebo effect with the RMSP two times than these treated units RMSP. So that means you want to eliminate all the R the pers 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 Placebo estimate with RSP that are two, something like bigger than two. You can use this preliminary this option to do to eliminate this. So usually we might put five here. That will exclude the non-treated state with five times of RSP as the for the treated units. Okay. So when you run the thin runner you will get a result like this. Basically, it will give you all the synthetic control estimate for each year, for each time period. So in our case, it's 1989, 1990 until 2000. And that's the estimate effect. That's basically give you the effect here, the difference here for each period, for each period. Okay, so the C1 is mean the first period after the treatment happened until the 12th or 12th year after the treatment happened. And this is just a point estimate. And this gives you the p-value. And but this p-value is just simple p-value, does not take into account the pre-treatment RSP. So it also gives you the p-value, standardized p-value. 
So after you take into account, actually you find your uh, California estimate are very significant because California's estimate has very small pre pretreatment RSP. So many placebo estimates actually they have very big effect, but their pretreatment RSP are also very big. So when you take into account this, they are not very big. They are not bigger than the California's estimates. So usually we will use this p-value, the standardized p-value as our benchmark when we do hypothesis testing. Okay. So this means no one bigger than the California one. Okay. And finally, you might want to draw some graph to show your effect. Uh, so you can also use scene runner, but you need to save the result. So the result, the, the result after running the scene runner can help you to draw some graph to show your result. So you usually run the scene runner, and then you might need to merge your current data set with the result you just generate. The result just generate. So what kind of result you will generate is like this. This is the result. So you will generate, when you run the scene runner, they will generate the all the pretreatment RSP for each unit in each year. Uh, no, no, not each year. In pretreatment period. And this is post-treatment period, post-RMSPE, for each state, for each state. And you can see, for California, the pre-treatment RSP is very small, it's just 1.4. And post-RMSP is very big, that makes sense, because after treatment happens, they are very different. And other states, they also generate, because when you calculate, when you do the placebo estimate, you will get every state it's RSP, okay. And it also give you the effect, that is the difference between the real outcome and the synthetic control outcome. So that's the synthetic control estimate. So you can consider like this. So for California, after the 1988, after treatment happened, the effect is very negative. So you can see here. So the effects are your estimate. And you can draw this estimate with compare with other non-treated states. That will give you the uh, compare with the true estimate and the uh, placebo estimate. And here uh, is you can use uh, this command to generate. Either do it by yourself using the information in that file or you can use scene runner is sub command to display the effects graph for example they have the command called single treatment graphs this you just type it will generate the graph looks like this this is the solid line is California is a treatment treated unit and other is the gray one I, I don't know whether you can see or not other placebo state, placebo estimate. So you just you can use directly using their command called single treated graph, and you just tell the data what's the maxima for your outcome, your effect, from thirty five, minus thirty five, and also the label for the y, y axis. So that is this y axis can simplify. And where you need to put your line, the ray line here, is a minus one. That means the year right before the treatment happened. Okay. That's you can do. And maybe you want to eliminate some placebo effect with very big pre-treatment RMSPE. So you can directly use in the information you just generate. Like, I just want to keep the placebo estimate the non the treated the non treated unit with pretreatment RSP smaller than the treatment treated units is pretreatment RSP 
uh, five times of the pre treatment uh, units pre-treatment RSP. Okay, you just want to keep this placebo estimate. You can use this information to keep or eliminate. Okay, and then you can draw the same graph, and then you can exclude other states, other placebo estimate with very big pre-treatment RSP. Okay, that's one thing you one thing you can do. You can use directly using their subcommand, like single treated graph, something like this. But you can also draw, draw by yourself. You can draw by yourself using your code to display this the same graph or do some customized graph. Again, you need to run the scene runner and generate the result file and then merge your original file with this result file. And then you can use this new data set to draw the graph. And how to do that is like typical drawing in SETA. I have mentioned how to use uh, this uh, line or two-way graph in the video. So if you're not really familiar with that, you can uh, watch the video. And But the thing is you draw a lot of effects and effects and year for each state. You draw a lot of this for each state from their the number 4 to the 39th. That's the code try to do. And you can also do some customize, like what's the Y title, what's the X title, and then you might generate the thing looks like this by yourself. You basically draw each line for the placebo estimate. And you use this red line to represent the treated units estimate. And uh, by yourself, you can customize, so it looks better, I think. Okay, compare with the 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 graph generated by the 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 scene runner. So you can use the data sets you just create by scene runner and use then their information, like effects that they generate, the result is generated by the scene runner, to draw the graph like this. Okay, so I give you one example code to display such things. Okay, so any questions for this? Okay, so that's for the synthetic control method when you, if you, you want to use data to implement this. And you can do this using the R, but we will discuss this when we when I upload the R's video. Okay. Okay. And then I would like to give you oh, maybe we can have the break, the five minutes break. Okay. Uh, pretreatment 可是力到底是哪一些东西他没讲可是关于 Y 
的估计啦，就说哦，我也让它其他的特技也像，不是只有奥康而已。比如说像刚刚的 California， 就是我，或者是我，我也有一些话可以去解释我，呃，看一下，去解释我们这个 synthetic control 的 synthetic California 的它的特性。哦，它是一个也很多年轻人的组成的人工的粥，还有它是它的这个酒的价格也差不多。但如果你没有这些，只有这个的话，就是呃，少了一点可信度而已吧。表现会差很多还是？表现其实不会差太多，因为最重点的还是这个这些 pretrain 的好康，只是没办法说服别人这样。只是你可以多讲一些话，如果你有这些变数。哦。或者是你可以再去进一步解释，有些人也会想要知道哦，为什么是这个钟拿到比较多？你说因为那些自己会讲，就是他们要。对对，你就比较可以讲哦，因为犹他州他也有很多年轻人，嗯、或者他的啤酒价、啤酒的消费也很高。嗯、就是，但是关于这个 Z 到底放什么，没有任何的准则，就是说为什么是放这个、这个、这个？而且如果你放不同的，比如说你用不同年做 average， 得出来的味就不一样。所以这边没有没有太多准则，但是所以会有一些人会做一些罗巴森 check， 说如果我改变一点点这个 predictor 的呃 take average 的年份，或者是拿掉这个，结果不应该变化很大。也就是说，你的结果不应该是在特定的 C 下得出来的结果。所以有没有规定说一定要放在区分之前的字，就是对全部年都不能有。呃、哦、呃，全部年全部 pre treatment period 的年的平均，就不能放到之后，不能放到之后，对。哦，就之前的你要挑几集来放去，就可以。都可以，他没有说一定要怎么样。然后歪就是你那是不能写的，不能写。理论上你可以每年都放，但是像他这个例子也没全放。他他他刚刚那个图其实靠八八年、八零年跟七五年，就就就长这么漂亮了。像这种这个图是只放了三年两三年而已。这个有时候为什么它不放？还是呃，为什么不全放？所以我觉得要全放啊，基本上就是全放了。反正它是跑很多次，然后算出这个表现结果，然后跑。嗯，没有没有没有，这个只是为了 demo， 应该说我只是为了 demo 而已。对对对对。
，可以可以可以。呃，没有没有会，主要目的还是一个变数对另外一边，就是 treatment 对于 outcome 影响。只是 treatment 很多时候是被某个事件所带起来变化。所以我的痛点是包含这个事件的，不是事件，不是事件。呃，可能想得下来让你有这种感觉，可是实际上真正关系的还是变数。这个事件只是驱动那个变数改变的。用来估，用来我们可以估计这个关系的一个工具而已。所以，我们关心的并不是，呃，不，刚刚那个 s i n g 在讲说例子有点像是，呃，我们好像关心那个政策啊，也确实在这个例子，我们是关心那个反烟的政策。可是，因果论最终极的还是关心的是变数分析。譬如说，我待会会讲这个例子，他是在讲有没有戴口罩对于 COVID-19 传播的影响。那他确实也是用紧张场说，然后也是找一个政策，但那个政策就是强制大家戴口罩。可是你关心并不是那个 specific 这个政策的影响，你是利用那个政策它所背后隐含的 treatment， 就是大家要戴口罩，想要去了解戴口罩跟 COVID-19 传播的因果关系。这不是有人说衡量的政策的好坏，所以我们才做这个实研究吗？对于 policy， 从从 policy maker 的角度来讲，也许是这样。可是也许，但是从社会科学家或是经济学家来讲，他可能会关心更 general 的事情。就这个 policy 隐含的是一个 treatment 对某个东西的影响。那这个 part 只是把这个 policy 当做是这个 treatment 的代理。对，但你比较关心的还是更 general 的东西。那有问题问题就是，我们是不是通常做一个事情一定要有时间的质量？因为好像我们之前教的，像是 C I D 还有这个，对对对对，差，然后每个都是一定要有时间。不一定不一定，呃，我，不过我猜我今天恐怕讲不到 R D 的病，有些 R D 它的变化不是在时间，它可能是在区域地理上。哦，你说靠近？靠近那个 border 就得到，然后没有就没有。所以它这跟时间有没有关系？它目前刚好知道。对，只是蛮多会是用时间，因为很多确实就是来自于政策的改变，那会让你觉得好像大部分是政跟那个时间有关系，但确实很多是靠这个变异来，时间的变异来估计的因果关系，没错，但不是一定要。就我最近看了一个政府资料，就是通常他们是一年一年资料，像我还只是好像只用一年资料就很难。做出就好像一定要把别的，对啊对啊，如果你有比较多年的，你就会有比较长的变异可以用。OK， so let's start. So I give you one empirical example using the synthetic control, and from this example, you will find actually synthetic control. Can answer very important question and tiny questions, because you might find. So I think so far you might find you don't need very good data set when you you implement synthetic control method. You don't need the individual level data or a very confidential confidential data set. You just need aggregate level, some country level, CD level. And this type of data you can get from open data. So this and such data set actually combined with synthetic control method actually can answer very important question that just happened now. For example, in this paper published in 2020, just when COVID-19 uh, outbreak, and a lot of Western country, they their people actually doesn't want to wear the face mask. Because they think face mask actually does not really affect the spread of COVID-19, but that might make they are uncomfortable. And but from their this study, they use some open data from the Germany, which you can get, uh, everyone can get, and combined with synthetic control method, they can actually give very strong evidence suggest. Wearing the face mask actually can considerably reduce the COVID-19 case. 
and and you can see this is quite low cost uh, tool compared with a vesting or other thing other method okay and it's published in very good journal in science okay and they are all economists actually so many country actually experiment uh, exper uh, ex experience uh, the COVID-19 outbreak so so far until now is uh, around two years and one particular public health measure is introduce a face mask to require everyone has to wear face mask. But at least in the Western country, they are not really think this is the effective tool to eliminate the uh, spread of COVID-19. So at least at that moment, this question has not been systematically analyzed. But now we might all know the face mask works, really works, okay. So how they do that is they use the compulsory masking wearing in Germany. So in Germany, uh, they uh, does not require every citizen has to wear their face mask in public space until April 19, uh, 29th. But one region called Jena, they require their residents has to wear a face mask in the public space since April 6th. So they use this Jena's uh, policy change and combine with synthetic control using other region in Germany. Because other region in Germany, uh, they have the resident they, in these other regions, they have to wear the face mask um, until the uh, since the April 29th. So they use this and since that control to evaluate the effect of compulsory uh, face, uh, mask wearing on the spread of COVID-19. Okay. So so that's just I say they use the Jane, the, the region called Jaina. Is the first region that introduced face masks in public transportation and the public space on the April 6th. So everyone living in that place, that region, they have to wear the mask. But other regions in Germany, they do not do that. They do not have this requirement on, uh, by the April 29th. Okay, so we can use other regions in Germany as the non-treated units to evaluate the effect of compulsory mask wearing on the COVID-19 uh, spread. Okay, so they also argue why look at the Jaina is interesting because maybe Jaina is the outlier; it's not really representative. So they are because they causal effects only for this region. So if the, this region actually is not really represent the Germans case, German uh, national, not national representative, maybe their result is not really interesting. So the author try to persuade their result is can represent the uh, uh, result, the, uh, a representative case for the German. So why they are, how they argue, they say, uh, until April 5th, 2020, uh, on, uh, the Jaina has the 144 per uh, cases per uh, 100,000 residents. Okay. And the Germany, the median, or oh, this is a median, and the median for the Germany, oh no, no, this is not median, this is just for Jaina. And the median for other Germany's region is 155. So they are quite close. So, this, so Jaina is quite similar to the median of all the Germany's uh, regions. And also, the average are also similar. It's 126 and 119. Okay. So at that moment, the cases is not a lot. But now it's the last. Okay. So they, the data they use is just the open data. Every country, every region will report their COVID-19 cases. And government collect this. Uh, and it's a daily data, daily level. Okay. So like our government, we, we also report such things. And the region in Germany is around 400, so they use 
other 401 regions as the non-treated units to use synthetic control method. So the sample period is from the January 28th to May 1st. And the treatment happened in the April 6th. So they have sufficient long time period before treatment happened. So that's also important for the synthetic control method. You need to match your outcome over the long time period to, to make sure you really capture the some unobserved characteristics, the, the evolution of some unobserved characteristics over time. Okay. So the, the problem you want to estimate, you want to know the effect for the treated unit one, for the JNA. How does implement such policy, uh, mask wearing policy on COVID-19 cases? But the problem is you only observe Y1. That is the potential COVID-19 cases if they implement this policy. So you never know Y0. What if JNA does not implement such policy? What's the, the spread of COVID-19 looks like? So the synthetic control method is you want to recover this Y0 using the other state weight average. Other states observe outcomes is weight average. So we want to choose a weight, assign a weight to these 401 regions. And how we assign the weight, how we choose the weight is we want to minimize the pre-treatment characteristic X between the treated units and this weight average non-treated units. Okay, we want to minimize this. So the X includes absurd characteristics like the population size in, in other regions and JNA and also education level or other absurd characteristics. And also all the pre-treatment outcome, that is the accumulative number of COVID-19 cases from the January 28th until the April 5th. The, the day just before a treatment happened. Okay. And subtract all the way, the summation of all the ways is equal to one. Okay. So this is their result. So they find some weight actually can match the outcome before treatment happened very well. So they do not display all the time paths. So actually it is from the January 28th until the April 5th, okay. And you can see the real JNA. The starting line is the real JNA. And dash line is synthetic control unit, the synthetic JNA, conceived by some, the weight average of other regions. And, you, and Y axis is cumulative number of COVID-19 cases per 100,000 residents. And you can see uh, if the JNA does not have such policy in April 6, the number of cases actually will increase to the 200 cases per 10, 000, uh, 100,000 residents. But the JNA, the real outcome actually is 115. 150. So actually reduce a lot reduced by around 50 cases per 100,000 residents. So compared with this baseline mean is around 30% reduction. Okay, so this is uh, their result. And they also show how the, the pretreatment matching. So they compare the JNA and the synthetic units, synthetic units. And you can see their results actually are quite similar. They also show the population density and the share of high educated population, share of female or average age of female population and male population. So they show several comparison and they find actually they are similar. Okay. And they also show what's the synthetic genome is consisted by these six regions only. So for this region, they receive 32 weight percent weight. So only these six 
region receive weight. Other four, other maybe 390 regions just receive zero weight. Okay, so this is the weight. And they also show the effects over time. So this is just show the difference between the synthetic units and real outcome, their difference. And also display with other, this is the study lines for Jaina, and other, the other regions, other 400 regions, the placebo estimate is displayed in the gray line. Okay, not very obvious, but you, you might see. And this is still hypothesis testing. We want to compare with the real Jaina's effects and other state, other regions. And they find actually the result are become significant. So the the the, the this graph is show the standardized p value for each time period, for each day after treatment happened, after introduce introduction of face mask. And you can see the p value actually uh, after they introduce this face mask compulsory rule, uh, the p value is not significant uh, for uh, until the uh, 14 days after the policy. And this quite makes sense. The p value is around tw uh, 0.2, so it's not significant. So until the uh, 15 days after the introduction of face mask, this becomes significant. It's below to the 10%. So this estimate, after this estimate, are become significant. And this actually makes sense because. 14 days, uh, you need to discover when the COVID-19 case, in the, the confirmed case, you might take 14 days to discover then. So some of result, some of accumulated uh, case actually is from the, uh, actually it's happened before the, uh, before the policy. Okay. So their result becomes significant after the 15 days after the, the policy. Yeah, so this is also makes sense. So basically you can find there's a drop here after the 14 days. Okay, and they also do some subgroup analysis using by age group, like 15 to 34 and 13, uh, 35 to 59 and 16. And they find the result most, uh, are bigger, much bigger for those who are above 16 years old. The reduction are very big. So save a lot of old people. Okay. And they also do several robustness check. That's something you can try to follow. For example, they use different predictor, like the, the predictor using just use one day or three day or seven days before treatment happened. And they actually generate very similar synthetic gene. So that means this synthetic gene is not just due to some specific uh, setting. You, if you just change your predictor, your covariate, the characteristic a little bit, uh, does not really affect the result. And they also do some another test called placebo in time test. That is they change the policy timing. So actually nothing happened in March 26. So they, but they, but they run the synthetic control and use March 26 as the timing of the treatment and run the synthetic control method. So that is, they only use the, day, the, the characteristic before March 26. And they find their synthetic Jena and real Jena, actually they are very similar until April 5th. Actually, until April 6th, they start to become different. So this means this something happened in April 6th. So other dates, if you use other day as a fake treatment timing, actually it does not generate any significant result right after that day, until, only until April 6th. So that's another way try to persuade your reader you find some causal effects. Okay. So finally they conclude, they find basically the introduction of the compulsory mask wearing 
uh, in Jaina actually result around 25% reduction in the cumulative number of COVID-19 cases, especially for the age group above 60 years old. The, the reduction is even larger, it's more than the 50%. And so basically, this gives you very strong evidence that wearing masks can really reduce the, the spread of COVID. Okay. And uh, they, they does not use very high quality data. They just use open data and combine with CDs method, and they can answer these very controversial questions. Okay. So any questions? Okay. Okay. So finally, I would like to extend uh, so so far we just discussed the single traded units so that means the number of traded units is just one but we can potentially ex extend to the multiple uh, traded units that is the number of traded units become two can become above two so that means maybe not only California receive this treatment, but also Pennsylvania or New York or other states also receive. And how can you use synthetic control to calculate, to estimate the average treatment effect for all these treated states? Okay, so that's the question we want to do, we want to extend. So how can we do that? The, it's, not, it's not very hard, but it'd be complicated. So if we have multiple treated units. The procedure of implementing a synthetic control estimation is the following. The first step is you estimate a separate treatment effect for each treated unit I. So you run the so that means you run the synthetic control estimation for each treated unit. So for example, now just not just treated unit unit one get a treatment. Unit two also get a treatment. So you just run the synthetic control for unit one and you get the causal effect for unit one. And then you run the synthetic control for the unit two, you get another causal effect for the unit two. And the second step is you want to get the average treatment effect untreated for this treatment group, for this, these two treatment treated units. You just sum over all the treated units. So G is the number of treated units. So you run the separate synthetic control map, uh, estimation for each treated unit, and you get a lot of alpha i treated, treated treatment effect for each specific unit, and in each period, in each period, from the treatment, the, the, the first period after treatment happened until the last period after treatment happened. And you just sum over all the treated units and take the average, and you can get the average treatment effect on these treated units. So that's very simple. Okay? Okay. And the more complicated things is how to do the hypothesis testing, the statistical inference. That's more, in, that's more compli a bit complicated. So, and there are several recent methods try to develop for the inference with more than one treated unit at different treatment timings. So they might happen implement their policy in the different timing. Okay. And we also use permutation method. So very similar methods we just don't talk about for the single treated unit case. Okay. So they just uh, just a little bit, but a bit, a bit complicated. So here I give you the example. Before going to more generalized case, we give you just example, an uh, example. And this example, just only two units get a treatment. Okay. So suppose California, uh, Pennsylvania and California also, uh, they, these two states pass anti tobacco law in 1988 and 1987. And we want to know how does this law, since these two states all pass this law, we want to know the average effect of this law on the secret consumption in these two states. Okay. So you want to evaluate the average treatment effect. You, you don't just want to know 
the treatment effect for specific state. You want to know on average for these two states what 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 happened. Okay. So first step is you again you calculate every treatment effect for the treated unit. So that's just as I mentioned before. You run the synthetic control estimation for the Pennsylvania, so you get alpha one for each period, for each period after the treatment happens. And then you run the same synthetic control estimation for the California, you get alpha two. And you just take the average over the these treated unit state. And you can get alpha from that is the average treatment effect for each period, for each period. So I, here I just uh, ignore the time dimension because it's a bit complicated. So you can consider I calculate do this average for each time period after treatment happens. So you can get this up up up. That's the average treatment effect for these two states in each period after treatment happens. Okay. So let's you get. And the next question is whether this alpha bar is really represent the causal effect. It's really different from no effect, different from the zero or not. So the next thing is you need to do the hypothesis testing. And how can we do that? Again, we need to do a lot of placebo estimates. But here is a bit complicated because now, we not only do the placebo estimate for the California, but also we need to do placebo estimate for the Pennsylvania. So for each possible placebo estimate, possible average placebo effect, we need to do two. One is for Pennsylvania, one is for California. So again, we run the same synthetic control method. For example, uh, here the I means one possible combination, one possible two possible estimate. Because two possible estimate will give you one possible possible average tumor effect. So I means one possibility. And we have a lot of possibilities. So how many possibilities we have, I will let you know later. So we first, we do one placebo estimate. For example, we choose Alabama as a placebo estimate for the Pennsylvania. That's one, we do this. And we use Alaska for California. So we use these two to calculate the average treatment, placebo treatment effect. That's just first combination. First possibility. So we do this too and get the uh, average effect, placebo effect. Okay, that's one possibility. One possible average treatment effect. One possible placebo average treatment effect. Okay. And then we do second times. We use Colorado for the Pennsylvania and run the synthetic control. And Connecticut is for California. That's Another possibility, another possibility. And how many possibility we have is we have for the Pennsylvania, the possible placebo state is 37. And for California also 37. But how many combination we have is 37 times 37. Okay. So for example, first, you use New York for Pennsylvania. And you combination you have is New York plus uh, Utah, you have one possibility average possible average treatment effect. New York, Alaska, New York, uh, uh, other state, the uh, Texas. And you have so for each state in Pennsylvania you need to find 37 combinations. So how many possibility combinations? 37 times 37. So only just only two units get a treatment. The possibility is around 100, uh, 1,300 possible possible average placebo estimate, placebo average treatment effect. Okay. So you can imagine if you have 
a lot of 3D units. And so far, actually, you take a lot of time to calculate a lot of perceivable estimate, a lot of weight also. So it takes a lot of time if you have a lot of 3D units. Okay. So, so far we can, uh, no, we, we still can only use this way to uh, calculate the p-value. We don't have uh, enough, enough knowledge to derive the asymptotic theory for the, our perceivable estimate, uh, for, for the synthetic control estimate, to use just formula to conduct the hypothesis testing, like other regression. Okay, okay so, so the goal is we compute the p-value, and we, for each possibility, we calculate the average perceivable effect. And we want to compare with the effects for the treated units of Pennsylvania and California, their average. And again, we want to know from these 1,300 possible perceivable estimate, perceivable average treatment effect, how many of them are bigger than the real, the real effect for California and Pennsylvania? And if the share, a lot of perceivable effects are bigger than these causal effects, these uh, California and Pennsylvania, the real effect, we might conclude these effects not very significant because the we just randomly pick other perceivable combination, we can guess very big impact compared with this uh, real effect. So the p-value will be very high. That means we cannot say it's significantly different from zero. Okay. But if we find none of them or very few of them are bigger than our real estimate, we might conclude this is significantly different from zero. So the threshold is also the same as the 5%, 10%, or 1%. Less. If you make the p value is below that, you can conclude it's significant. This estimate is significant. Okay. So, any questions? Okay. So, this just more general. Like, the number of treated units is not 2, it's a G. So, I, I will not mention, it's very similar. You again do the same thing, you take the average over this G treated units. And also, how many possibility of your perceivable estimate is JG times JG, J1 times J2 times J3 until JG. So you will have a lot. Okay. And then you use the same way to calculate the p-value. So this, if you understand the two units case, that's also just extend to the G unit. The number of the number of treated units is G. Okay. Okay, and you can do use the uh, theta to implement this multiple treated unit case, and you just need to define a new variable called putting this function d d function, and you need to create some new variable. And what kind of variable you need to define is you need to define the binary variable that is equal to one for the treated units in the treat post treatment period. And zero, this variable is zero means others. So that is, for our example is, you need to create a variable called D or other, and any name you can just give. And what kind of information you need to put is, you need to say, uh, California, and when they start the policy, it's year after 1989. So this variable is equal to one if California, the observation is California and after the 1989. And or another treaty unit, that is Pennsylvania, and they implement the policy in year 1988. Okay. So you need to just need to create uh, this new variable. So if you have the uh, third treated unit, you just add more. For example, New York, they act, implement some policy after 90, uh, 1990. Okay, so you just do more and more. And you create this new variable, you just put in the, this D function. And the 
theta, the thin runner, will help you to calculate the very complicated thing we just mentioned. Take the average and compare with the possible uh, average treatment effects and calculate the p-value. Okay, and it takes some time, but it will generate a p-value for you and also draw the sound graph. Okay, so any questions for this? Okay, so finally, I would like to give you some concluding remark for the synthetic control methods. Uh, there are several things I would like to mention. One is uh, the synthetic control master actually suffers from the course of dimensionality. You can imagine if you have uh, too many non-treated units, for example, if you have 1,000 non-treated units, you need to find a weight for each non-treated unit. So this takes time, take a lot of time. So if you just like typical uh, micro uh, individual level data, maybe you have 10,000 individual and just one get, a unit, one get treatment, you, you might need to find a weight, a, a, a set of weight for each these 10,000 individuals. And this actually uh, take, when you calculate, it take a lot of time. So sometimes we might try to use the non-treated units that look similar to the treated units by plotting their pretreatment periods, time path. And if we just use the non-treated units, they look similar to the treated units. And eliminate, kind of like pre-screen, eliminate those who are not looks very similar. And just use this and you can improve the match quality. Okay, that's something you can do. And also, you might also realize if you have a lot of uh, treated units. So, so far, if you just have two, you have so many combinations for your possible estimate if you want to calculate the p-value. So if you have three or four or five or 100, it also takes a lot of time to run these possible estimates. But actually, no, until now, we don't have uh, enough uh, tools to deal with this issue. We just rely on the, our computer can become faster and faster. Okay. And also, if someone can derive a syntactic theory for the synthetic control estimates, then we can just use their formula to, 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 to know a distribution looks like this. We don't need to do permutation method. Okay. And finally, is a synthetic control estimate actually rely on very important assumption that is the pretreatment period need to be large, need to be long, very long, related to the transitory shock. So that means we need sufficient long pretreatment period to match the outcomes. But this is a bit ambiguous. It's not very clear. Uh, how how long is is a, is very long? Okay. So until now, no one give us the criteria or guidance. Uh, how long for the pretreatment period? So you just need to find as long as possible. So maybe I think uh, forty or uh, twenty or thirty time periods could be long, yeah, okay. So this is the new method. So traditional textbook, like most harmless, actually does not cover synthetic control method. But this new textbook, calls causal inference, the mix tab, chapter 10, you can look at. And also, about this, they write a survey paper about this synthetic control method, you can also look at. Okay, and uh, yeah, and that's for the synthetic control method. So, any questions? Okay, so I think we don't have time to for the difference in difference. Oh no, <laughs> regression discontinuity design. So I will record a video, but I we all still have four minutes. So let me just briefly 
introduce the concept, but I think you, you might know some of, some of the concept. So the regression discontinuity size also try to solve the problem of selection bias. And you, from the previous lecture, you should know the best way to eliminate this selection bias is conduct the randomized control trial, the RCT. So that is, you don't let the individual to select into the treatment. They cannot get a, uh, select whether they get treatment or not. You assign the treatment to them. And how you assign the treatment to them is based on some random process. So some people just lucky, they get a treatment, they become a treatment group. And some people does not. But doing this, RCT is very expensive and sometimes has ethical issues, especially for social science. You cannot enforce someone to get a treatment which they, they are not interested in. So you, you, you might do that for medical things like vaccine. But for the social science, it's hard to use RCT to answer important questions. But if you cannot, you know some in detailed institution knowledge of treatment assignment process, maybe you can use this knowledge to create an experiment. So even you cannot really control the treatment assignment process, you still can use, even you cannot control, but if you know some knowledge to know, you have some knowledge to know why this guy get a treatment, why this guy cannot, you might be able to use that knowledge to uh, estimate the causal effects, to create the experiment. So that's the idea of the regression discontinuity design. The RD design is for the fact that some rules generate a discontinuity in the treatment assignment. And this treatment assignment is determined by whether the individual exceeds some threshold of some variable, of some variable. Uh, and such variable will determine who can get a treatment, who cannot. And such variable usually we call assignment variable or running variable, forcing variable. And assume other factor does not change abruptly at the cutoff. Then we might be able to use, uh, use uh, attribute any change in outcome can be attributed to the, the treatment. So here is an example. People might want to know whether you can get some benefit when you enter the National Taiwan University. A lot of people want to go to the elite school because they think go to that school, you will have better career. So students graduate from NTU might earn more than other graduate students in uh, than other students in other school. But it's very difficult to know whether this positive earning premium is due to the real effect of NTU on your life, or just because good students tend to select NTU, tend to enter the NTU. So no matter these students go to any school they will just earn more, just due to they have high ability. So this later is just the selection bias. It's not really represent the causal effect. But we want to know the causal effect here. So you can, a great way to answer this question is run a randomized control trial. So you just, two group of students, they either can enter the NTU or Tsinghua University, NTHU. So instead of based on the test score, if we just randomly decide who can go to NTU, who can, who can go to Tsinghua, and follow them up to 10 years to see who can earn more, to see whether NTU students earn more than the Tsinghua students, uh, you can get a causal effect because whether they can go to NTU or Tsinghua is just due to the random event. But nobody will let me run this experiment because this is very important treatment for them. They, we cannot use this way to decide who get a treatment or not. Okay. So instead of using this way to 
uh, determine who go to NTU or NTHU, the Tsinghua University. If we have some knowledge to know why someone can go to NTU, why someone cannot, we can use this knowledge to create a kind of like experiment at the some threshold. So for example, we all know in Taiwan, whether you can go to some school is based on your test score, the zhi kao chenji, or the zhi, uh, chenji. So if your score, uh, the mi uh, mini, mi minima score for NTU is 400, suppose. So you can, so perhaps, if you get 400, enter NTU. So if you get 399, you go to another school. But whether you get 400 or 399, actually, they are quite similar. So maybe just because you guess the right answer for one math question or English question, you get 400. But you guess wrong question, wrong, wrong answer, you 399, and you go to another school. So, so for the students around the threshold, actually, they might be very similar. The only difference is one just lucky go to NTU, one does not. And RD is here. You can kind of like create very similar as the experiment by comparing the people who get 400 score versus those 399 entered to another school and compare their career outcome in the 10 years. And if you find any difference after 10 years, that can be attributed to the uh, about NTU because these two group of people are similar. So that's some ideas can display by this graph. Basically, the outcome is your earning and assignment variable is the test score and the cutoff is the 400. If you pass 400 score, you enter the NTU. If not, you go to another school and you can compare the outcome around the cutoff. And, and why we compare the outcome around cutoff? Because these two group of people, they, whether they pass the cutoff or below the cutoff, maybe just due to some random issues, random things. And their family background or ability or other things should be very similar. Instead, one get and one does not. And then you can get a causal effect. If you find some effect, you can say, conclude say, or oh, you have some big impact on your life. If you do not find anything, you can also conclude no impact. Okay. So that's the a basic idea of RD. And re, uh, someone really do that. And I will discuss this example in the video. So here is just give you some background information about RD design. And then the next week we will go online and uh, but during the class time, we will have office hours. So feel free to make appointment and we can have online office hour. Okay, so any questions for this? Okay, that's all for today's class.